The fourth day of the Santos Tour Down Under and another first for the event. A first start in Modbury and also a first time ever start on the grass. The riders faced up uh, to 126 and a half kilometres as they went into the Barossa Valley in Tanunda. In the Oka jersey of leadership, Geraint Thomas hoping for an easy ride on the eve of the Old Wollonga Hill battle and he'll be helped on the way by Matty Heyman, a former Commonwealth gold medalist. The crowd had already witnessed the start at half past six in the morning of some six and a half thousand cyclists on the Bupert Challenge. They were now arriving in Tanunda, while here Andre Greipel was more busy with autographs, thinking of the long ride ahead. And plus we'll be thinking about a victory. Studio Grady, always the ambassador for cycling, but also the ambassador for Adelaide and this Santos Tour Down Under as well. So the ride is making their start on the grass. This was to stop congestion out on the highway and the ones on the road. A short neutralised section before the first attacks of the day. Mike Turta moving the car clear. The race all set to go. Graham Brown centre right on the Blanco team. Anxious to get these legs warmed up for the day ahead. Unfortunately, with a shower of rain earlier in the morning, beautiful day now, temperatures much, much lower than they were 24 hours ago. And then came the attacks, and everybody was surprised to see the world champion, Philippe Gilbert, go up the road. Out to test his legs, he was very quickly joined by Damien Housen, the Australian under-23 individual time trial champion, and they went on to build themselves up a rather large advantage when no reaction came immediately from the main field. Bernard Eisel setting the pace, the teammate of Geraint Thomas on the front for Sky in no hurry and so the gap began to open. The first target of the day would be the top of the climb of Humbug Scrub Hill. That came 30 kilometres in. No challenge at the front, Housen went over the top first, Gilbert second. But going over the climb in third place was Jack Bobridge and that would mean a new leader in the Skoda King, the King of the Mountains competition tomorrow. Well, no challenge and no help initially for Team Sky, who had to do all of the pacemaking as uh, Philippe Gilbert and Housen continued to pick up the points out on the course and time bonuses. Riders enjoying their visit through Birdwood as they continued to pierce the Barossa Valley. Looking straight into the eyes here of the BMX champion of Switzerland, Martin Kohler. Everyone expecting this was rather a strange move, but because there was a tailwind out on the course, well, I have to say that Philippe Gilbert maybe thought he could create the big surprise, but then the big guns in the main field started to turn on the pressure. Into the feeding station here, and Housen grabbing his musette, and the riders were not that far behind. The gap was now a minute and a half as they were now pursuing the leaders. The next challenge along the course would be the Jayco Sprints at Mount Pleasant with 81 kilometres covered, and the field were beginning to close in. Philippe Gilbert seemed happy enough to be riding in Australia in warm sunshine, while his home country of Belgium was seeing, seeing minus degrees on the, on the barometer. When they went through Mount Pleasant, Philippe Gilbert led through there to take himself the three-second time bonus just ahead of Housen, but behind it was more important because one second still remained, and Geraint Thomas was trying to get it. Thomas could have done with that second to increase his overall lead, but it was the teammate of Tom Slachter, who sits in second place in this race, who took the second and kept it in the team. And so, five seconds was still the advantage overall for Geraint Thomas. It looked at that moment the fear were going to be rejoined, but in the next eight kilometres, they continued to increase their lead. And when they got to Springton, it was Gilbert ahead of Hansen, and again, a battle royale for that single second. And again, it was Graham Brown who beat Geraint Thomas to it. Which shows how keen Geraint Thomas is to try and get himself a few extra seconds into the bag before the final battle, because that will be around Old Wollonga Hill. The break lasted for 118 kilometres before the two riders were brought back into the fold. And it was eyes down for the finish, but it wouldn't be before there were some crashes. Touch of wheels as the riders went around the fallen two riders from the Basque country of Spain, Euskadel Euskadi, and also there the sprinter walking around number 51, Tyler Farah, had lost his chance of winning the stage. Well, a lot of riders are down and they uh, managed to get themselves back up and in towards the finishing line, but that was a very nasty crash and it was an indicator of things to come. This rider here it was Jean Aberastri, who was looking for his teammate left on the floor. Then, as the riders came into the last 700 metres, a massive pile up as riders fell left and right. Among them, two of the Blanco team had gone down, including Graham Brown. So they wouldn't see the sprint and the clear victory by Andre Greipel, who got clear of the field to notch his 13th win 
of his career in this event, and that is a record. But it was a touch of wheels in the middle. It looked as though it was Kelderman and Brown amongst the first fallers. A number of Orica Green Edge riders went down, including Daryl Impey and Matthew Goss. They were left, but will get the same time as the rest of the field. This is Daryl Impey, who seemed OK after a few minutes by the wreckage. So, so while we left the riders on the road, all given the same time, the win had gone to Andre Greipel, who is a very, very happy man indeed. Well, Andre, that was uh, win number 13 over the years at the Santos Tour Down Under, but it was pretty scary on the run into the finish today. Yeah, there was a bit of crosswind to, to the end, and uh, yeah, with the headwind, uh, the last two kilometres was uh, pretty messy, and uh, yeah, the team did a good job to keep me in the front. <laughs> with the headwind, it wasn't easy. But yeah, we waited as long as possible, and uh, I think we did a perfect lead out again. You were pretty impressive on Corkscrew. Uh, you should have the confidence. Uh, are you confident with Corkscrew with uh, Wollonga Hill in front of you? Yeah, I think so. I don't see why not. Um, obviously, I'm a bit tired now, but I think everyone is. This uh, you know, first race of the season is uh, starts to take its toll. But um, no, I'm, I'm confident. I'm going to give it everything, and uh, yeah, hopefully that will be enough. Good stuff. Go and get a rest. Cheers. Thanks a lot. So Greipel the first to receive his award on stage. He lost any chance of winning this race on day two, but he has won two of the four stages. And so far, after four days, no Australian winner of any of those stages. A popular figure in the crowd, but this man here is thinking more now, keeping this ochre jersey right through to the end. He faces up to his biggest test tomorrow, the longest stage based on the old Wollongong Hill. Can get in Thomas, hold on. 